I barely have space to piss or turn around in those tiny bathrooms, let alone get jiggy with it. Flight attendants of Reddit, what happens when you suspect people of having sex in the bathroom of the plane and how often does that happen? How's it going, my viewer? Ready for another story time my dude? Great, get your popcorn and strap in because this one is going to get good. Since you're already here, why don't you do your boy Andrew a favor and hit that subscribe button, or at least like the video. And if you do, I'll give you access to Belle Delphine's OnlyFans. Enough BS, let's get into these juicy stories. Never tried, but read that it's easier to dirty spoon under blankets on a red eye than use the tiny bathroom. I never get this. On every flight I've been on, there's always lineups for the bathroom. And flight attendants nearby. How do two people get in there unnoticed? I caught two little people having sex in the photo booth at my bar. We had to lift them out by hand because they were so drunk. They were completely naked. Pilot here. Once heard our senior cabin crew bang the door and shout in her thick Irish accent, if I'm not getting any, use too sure as hell aren't. Get out and sit down. Edit. My most liked comment is about customers doing the nasty in the loo. Great. The logistics of this seem mind-boggling. I can barely close the door while avoiding pee splatter and fluids on the side of the toilet. I guess I'm just too grossly uncoordinated to ever be in the Mile High Club. I just can't fathom how to fit all six of us in the bathroom. United here. I knock on the door and ask if everything's okay. If they're smart, only one person answers. I can't exactly barge in, but once I hear a second voice, I can open the door. This is where the fun begins. I then drag the two with their pants down to the front. They get to do the walk of shame. Then I open the emergency door and fling them out. They make a nice splash over the ocean. I usually quip at them something pithy I practiced a night before, something like you should have used a serious tag. It wasn't sex, but I actually had a flight attendant introduce me to a guy I dated for three years. We were flying out of a war area and I had an entire row to myself. It was a dry contract so the second we were wheels up from the last post everyone was ordering beer and or liquor. I was listening to music and felt someone watching me. So I turn to my left and see this super cute guy holding six beers. He told me the flight attendant only agreed to give him that many if he would come up to my row and share them with me. I looked back at the flight attendant and he was giving me a thumbs up. He sat down and then we dated for years. He actually sent me a photo of him and the same flight attendant a couple of years ago. Serious answer not very often. How do we react, it depends. If they are first class passengers, you pretend you don't see. I once had a couple ask me if they both could use it together, confused I asked why? He gave me a wink and said it is on their bucket list. This couple was in their late 50s. I informed him, only one person is allowed inside at any given time, and if I see them enter together, I would have to stop them, however, I will be leaving for 15 mins now they did the deed and thanked me. I'm all about helping people tick off their bucket lists. I fly for a really big international airline. So I had chance to see people from all over the world. Still, I can say it doesn't happen that much. What happens how I react depends on the flight, passengers and their previous attitude. Mostly, I just knock the door and mind my own business if they don't disturb others. The main problem is in case of emergency or sudden turbulence, lovebirds will almost certainly get hurt, and there is no way I can explain to the company how I let it happen. Nobody wants to do it for that minor thing, but on paper, the passengers can be picked up by airport police and charged even. It happened to me flying JFK to Madrid. After the meal, lights went down for movies and rest. I was very junior and kept walking the aisles for waters, napkins, etc. Saw this young lady go to the lav, and two minutes later a guy went into same lav. I told a senior F.A. asking what to do and he said. Nothing. Let them have fun. After, she went back to the seat with the smile, and he went back completely paranoid if someone saw him or not, women are brave than us on things like this lol. When I served breakfast to them, I gave her a big smile. After that, I never said anything about it but do know, most of the time the crew is aware of it. Great memories from great days. TWA. 
It doesn't happen that often because the lavatories are gross and you should never touch anything or you will get chlamydia and die. Also, maybe it's just me, but since no one looks at the occupied sign, if whoever is in there remembers to lock it at all, I instinctively tell people there's someone in there whenever they approach. So it's possible people have tried, and I unwittingly kill the mood. And then they have to stand in my galley in utter shame waiting for the bathroom that they don't even have to use as I munch, oblivious, on my salad until their partner comes out, and the two have to have a conversation about the failed event using only their eyes. Okay not completely related, but my sister was in the bathroom on a flight, and the captain announced ladies and gentlemen, we will be experiencing some slight turbulence. Suddenly the plane dropped then shuddered and stabilized. It what the hell kind of turbulence that was, all I know is I heard the most blood-curdling scream come from the bathroom. My sister comes out of the bathroom like she had just looked into the eyes of death. I suppose she thought we were crashing lol. When she sat down, she informed me that she had just fallen off the toilet. Suo it's safe to say I will never attempt to join the Mile High Club. Just imagine. Not a flight attendant but a pilot, I've been flying for a few years and luckily haven't had anything of the sort. Closest I've personally had was a flight attendant get unwelcome touches from a drunk passenger. It's mildly satisfying having charges pressed and the customer service folks informing that passenger who had hundreds of thousands of miles and enormous status with the airline, loose all of that and banned from flying with us on top of it all. Everyone forgets that cabin altitude of airliners is 6 to 8k feet, and the light mild hypoxia means alcohol affects you significantly more than on the ground. It doesn't happen as often as people think it does. When I was still flying, 71 to 91, more people just got off in the rows of seat in darkness under a blanket, rather than in toilets. First class you ignored the people or gave the guy a wink, but other classes, I just smiles knowingly at them. We had a few people also do it in the galley below floor level on B747-4 which we had on our aircraft, although more often than not it involved one or more of the crew. Easy to do as you could dim the lights, and by opening the elevator door downstairs, the elevator you're not operate. Prior to 747 we had 707 and several times there were only two first class passengers, and we just left them too, it had a coffee break or sat on flight deck and told pilots what was going on. Cruelly one couple were getting friendly, naked under a blanket in business class, a kid asked for a blanket for his father, we pointed to that one the kid of about 7 to 8 yo grabbed it and walked off dragging it behind him, leaving the couple uncovered. One of them moved quickly to find something to cover themselves and accidentally turned on reading light, spotlighting themselves in the dark cabin, to the smiles of other passengers and crew who happened to be passing. The Yama flight attendant for an international airline. Sadly it doesn't happen that often, and what happens will very much depend on the day, if it's on a narrow body, single aisle, aircraft your chances of this are practically zero, it's too busy, and there are not enough bathrooms. On a larger aircraft, is where the fun begins. I've never had anyone brazen enough to ask, but don't think we won't find out. As another poster has said, we're never too far from the toilets usually, and also check them regularly, so don't think we won't find out. There are times when I've been too busy to give a crap, however with a bit more time. If possible we're going to make the most of it, and call throughout the plane to let all the other crew know what's going on, and at least we'll be listening to the awkward knocks and stifled whimpers through that flimsy door, and having a good giggle behind your back. I've brought down champagne from business before for a frisky couple after the fact, she turned bright red, but he seemed pretty impressed with himself. I've also flown with a terrible square who knocked down the door and ruined the party. So I guess the answer is, why MMV? We also know what's going on when two people are sharing a blanket across seats, you are surrounded by the elderly, children etc., don't be a douch. Additionally, I would like to add that the toilets are absolutely disgusting, even when they have just been cleaned. The cleaning crew are under tight deadlines just like everyone else, even in this COVID world, money comes first, and time is money. Pet peeve do not wear socks to the bathroom, you wouldn't do it in any other public bathroom, where people have pissed or shat all over the floor. If you want some real juicy stories, look for what FAs get up to on their downtime. Thanks for watching. 
What did you think of the story time? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more story times.